Before we get started today, I just want to remind you that we're in the middle of our annual raffle, and tickets are just $50, and it really helps support all the wonderful work that we're doing. If you buy a ticket today, I'll send you a personal thank you letter and a little gift. It's really easy. Just go to www.ndgraffle.com. That's ndgraffle.com. I'll be ever so grateful to you. Now let's get started. Hi, I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath, and welcome to my Daily Torah Thought. Today's thought is adapted from my colleague, Rabbi Dov Wagner, from Chabad at USC. Let's study a bit of Kabbalah. King Solomon writes, A wise person's eyes are in their head. Come on, of course a wise person's eyes are in their head. All people's eyes are in their head. Where else would they be? The Zohar, the foremost book on Kabbalah, says that we've learned that a person should not walk even four cubits with an uncovered head because the Shekhinah, the divine presence, rests on his head. This is the meaning of a wise person's eyes are in their head. They're focused on and they're conscious of a divine light which rests upon their head. The Zohar continues, You must know that this light that shines upon your head requires oil. Your body is the wick and the light shines above it. Make sure that the light always has the oil, the fuel that it needs. Now, what's the fuel? Good deeds. The human being as a candle, the soul as a divine flame that burns bright above us. What a beautiful analogy. King David in Psalms says, Ner Hashem nishmat adam. The soul of a man is God's candle. And even with all the innate spirituality and holiness of the soul, it still can't burn on its own. Because the act of doing a mitzvah, the act of Helping someone else in the physical world is even more connected to the essence of God than our souls themselves. So when we do a mitzvah, we fuel our soul's candle and allow it to burn bright. And that's exactly what this week's Torah portion, Behalotacha, is all about. The princes of the Jewish people have just helped complete the consecration of the tabernacle. Twelve tribes, each represented by their leader, bring the offerings of one day. But one tribe was left out. Aaron, the high priest, the leader of the tribe of Levi, noticed that aside from not bringing offerings, his tribe was not allowed to have a portion in the land. His tribe was not counted amongst those dealing with the natural order. And Aaron felt for his tribe. So God says to Aaron, Don't worry, your lot will be even greater than theirs. Every single day throughout all the years of the tabernacle and the temple, and in a sense, even after that, you're going to play a role. What? Bahalotacha et hanerot. When you kindle the flames of the menorah, El mul pene hamenorah, Ya'iru shivat hanerot. Towards the face of the menorah, all seven lights shall be kindled. Aaron's job will be to kindle the menorah each and every day to bring light into this world. But it goes deeper than that. The menorah's seven branches that Ezekiel saw in his prophecy represent the Jewish people. There are branches. Seven different character traits representing different people. There are candles, flames. Each and every soul is a candle. And each one has a slightly different path through which it shines. Aaron's job was to ensure that they were all kindled, all burning brightly. His job was to ensure that they all recognized How, despite being different branches, they were all part of the same menorah, all shining their light towards the same shared goal, towards the same shared destination. This light could endure forever. 
And we too, all of us, we are charged with Aaron's mission. Our flame burns bright when we do good deeds. The way we can ensure light in the world is when we're focused, not just on ourselves, but on helping each and every soul find its light so that the menorah is complete. But how is this to be done? The Torah hints to it in the word Bahalotacha, literally meaning not just to kindle, but to raise. Rashi, the foremost biblical commentator, says the wicks must be kindled until the new flame rises strongly on its own. Whenever we're interacting with another, it's not enough to just scatter sparks and hope something takes. We've got to kindle the light until it burns brightly on its own. Shower our fellow with love and inspiration until they no longer need any outside help to ensure that their candle will continue to shine. This actually reminds me of an old joke about a Polish peasant sitting next to this Jewish guy in a train. And he says to him, why are Jews so smart? Well, the Jew says, it's because of this special fish that we eat. It's got this special quality of making people smarter. Really? I have to get some of this fish. No problem, the Jew says. I've got some right here. For $10, I can sell you a piece. <laughs> the peasant is so exciting, starts counting his money. But as he begins to chew on the fish, he turns to this Jewish neighbor and says, Hold on a second. There's nothing here but herring. It's, it's regular herring. It shouldn't cost me more than 50 cents. The Jew smiles back. <laughs> You're getting smarter already. We live in a world so often filled with darkness. Our challenge is to remember that every human being is a candle. If we make our own light shine through Torah, through good deeds, we have an amazing capacity to light up the candles of others as well. There's an old Hasidic adage that every Hasid is a lamplighter, that his job is to take a fire, a fire that is in fact not even his own, and go out and find the lamps that may not be fully illuminated, that haven't unlocked their true capacity as givers of light, and light the spark that will allow them to light up the night. I'd like to finish with a story. Yehuda Avner was an Israeli diplomat who, as part of a long and illustrious diplomatic career, often acted as a liaison between Israeli leaders and prime ministers and the Lubavitcher Rebbe. On one visit to the Rebbe, the conversation turned to the role of a Rebbe. This is how Avner described the interaction. Let me tell you what I try to do. Imagine you're looking at a candle. What you're really seeing is a mere lump of wax with a thread down its middle. So when do a thread and wax become a candle? Or in other words, when do they fulfill the purpose for which they were created? When you put a flame to the thread and then the candle becomes a candle. As the Rebbe was speaking, a rhythmic canvas crept into his voice in the manner of a Talmudist pouring over his text. So that what he said next came out as a chant. The wax is the body and the wick is the soul. Ignite the soul with the fire of the Torah and a person will then fulfill the purpose for which he or she was created. And that is what I try to do to ignite the soul of our people with the fire of the Torah. A buzzer had been sounding periodically, indicating that others were awaiting their audience. So I rose to take my leave, pausing at the door to ask, My candle, has the Rebbe lit it? <laughs> no, he said, clasping my hand. I have given you the match. Only you can light your candle. Go out and light your candle, and make this world a better place. I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath. Shabbat Shalom.